Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. In oneness, we are Jess and Abe. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the collective spiral timeline as well as the collective linear timeline and the connection to these great galactic cycles from a more expansive perspective. If you haven't yet watched one of my last videos about integrating into a higher one mind, that higher unconscious, you're going to want to watch that one first or after this one because I'm going to be talking about the collective unconscious in this video in connection to the timelines and the galactic shifts. I'm going to put a link to that video below. Also, let me first start off by saying that the information that I received for this video, I interpreted it from my own perspective and my own personal inner knowledge at this given moment where I am in my own expansion process. Everything that I'm sharing is nothing final. Everything is in constant flux, in constant motion. And, you know, people are going to resonate with the messages or not. And that's fine either way. So to start, I want to go over the galactic cycles. And then we're going to go into the timelines right after because everything's kind of tied into the galactic cycles. Um, I'm not an astrologer in any way. I have a an understanding and an awareness of this cycle that happens every 26,000 years or so in terms of shifting of galactic energies. I'm going to read something from a website that I found that better explains um, sort of the information that came through for me from that astrological perspective. So from astrosoftware.com, it says... On the cosmic level, we know that 12 constellations cut across the zodiac. These make up the natural zodiac. They do not move and they always remain in the same place around the zodiac. However, because of a particular movement of the Earth's pole, the sun crosses the equator at a slightly different point every year. With the passing years, this point shifts from one degree approximately every 72 years and shifts signs approximately every 2,156 years. This movement is called precession of the equinoxes. A complete cycle lasts around 25,868 years. At the end of each cycle, there is a complete synchronization between each sign and each constellation. Therefore, every 2,156 years, a new age begins, from approximately 498 AD to the year 2,654, the spring equinox occurs in the Pisces constellation. Consequently, we are technically in the age of Pisces. It should be pointed out, however, that an age's influence is strongly felt around 500 to 800 years before the exact juxtaposition of the signs and constellations. Therefore, the coming of Christ into this world inaugurated the age of Pisces. Now keep in mind, in terms of timeline and when each of these ages starts and ends, I've seen so many different types of timelines. So the timeline in this article, I would say is, you know, approximately um, give or take a few hundred years or so based upon all the other um, timelines that have been given from other websites and stuff like that. We don't really know when the start and end to each of the age is. I mean, maybe someone does. I personally don't. Um, but I'm not really getting into those types of details. It's more of like the energy of each of the astrological ages, which matter the most. Um, but point being, each galactic age is approximately 26,000 years. It takes about 26,000 years to complete one cycle. And within that 26,000 years, there are 12 equal ages within that galactic cycle each of these ages being about 2,160 years long. Okay, so let's start off with the galactic cycles and then we'll talk about the timelines after because the galactic cycles ties in and is connected to the linear as well as the spiral timeline. 
what was shown to me was the galactic cycles in this sort of wave form. And so this wave kind of goes on for infinity. The one thing to note is that it's a wave in the way that I saw it, but I'm kind of starting to think that it's also more of a spiral. So I have this sort of mock-up that I made and as you can see it's just like a loose spiral and from a certain perspective it very much looks like a wave but when you look at it all around you can tell that it's a spiral so keep that in mind when we move forward with this information that it's possible that the galactic cycles move in this sort of loose spiral energy, um, also known as the wave. So this information is going to be very basic because I feel like there's still more that needs to be unfolded for me in terms of fully understanding everything. This is not being interpreted from any sort of scientific, mathematical, or astrological point of view. This is purely being interpreted from my own inner knowledge. Okay, so when you look at a wave, we have sort of like the top height part of the wave, which is the crest, and then we kind of downswing into the tro of the wave, which is the bottommost part of the wave, and then we have this midpoint that connects um, the beginning of the wave with the end of the wave. And that's sort of like the basic parts of a wave. What was shown to me was that the galactic cycle is connected to um, the parts of the wave. So we have one wave, which includes the crest and the tro of the wave, the midpoints meeting at the beginning and the end. And so one wave or one spiral, however you want to look at it, equals one galactic cycle. So it equals approximately 26,000 years. And where the beginning and the end of the galactic cycle, the wave, the spiral, meet with the midpoint, these are the shifting points from one galactic age or one galactic cycle into the next galactic cycle. So these shifting points are very much full of that intense shifting energy as one galactic cycle moves into the next galactic cycle. And the same type of energy from sort of my own understanding probably is mimicked in the midpoints of one full cycle or one full wave as we have here. What came to me was that the midpoint of the 26,000 year cycle that we're on is actually the downfall of the Mirian Atlantis. I put a question mark because this was kind of my own understanding. I don't know if it's true. So the midpoint of one full cycle also sort of mimics the energy or that shifting energy from one cycle into the next cycle. If anything, it has this energy of shifting from the crest part of the wave or the top part of the wave into the bottom part of the wave. So that alone holds intense energy and it also kind of coincides with the downfall of Lemurian Atlantis because it was that sort of really intense shifting energy that plunged Gaia into the lower frequencies, into the lower energies, into the lower dimensions. And then it was shown that we are here at the end of our 26,000 year cycle, shifting into the new 26,000 year cycle, we are in the shifting point. Also based upon the article that I just read, within the 26,000 years, it's broken down into 12 astrological ages. So right now we are in the age of Pisces and it's gonna be followed by the age of Aquarius. So. We're kind of in this shifting point, which includes the age of Pisces, and I see it as an overlap of the age of Pisces overlapping with the age of Aquarius, those energies overlapping. Um, I see it as a, a ton of different overlapping energies, the overlapping of 3D into 5D, the overlapping of one galactic cycle into the next galactic cycle. It's just 
a lot of intense shifting energy in this midpoint um, area that we're in. So in terms of timeline, there was um, something that went around that said that 2012 or December 21st, 2012 was the end of a galactic 26,000 year cycle based upon ancient civilizations such as the Mayan calendar. Now, I don't know how accurate that is, but it does in a way resonate with me. So I'm sort of open to that idea and it very much aligns with the information that I'm getting in terms of us being at least in that overlapping energy of the end of a 26,000 year cycle. Also, there's information about how we're now in the age of Aquarius and not in the age of Pisces anymore. I don't know in terms of timelines about that, but again, I'm feeling very much the overlap of energies. So whether the Pisces age is done or not, you know, it's still very much that overlapping of energy until we finally move fully into the age of Aquarius and into the new galactic age. It's also good to note, um, just for reference, what came to me is because one of these um, waves, one of these spirals equals 26,000 years, it's possible and probable that the Lemurians at least, I don't know about the Atlanteans, but it's in my awareness that the Lemurians existed for millions of years. So they had to have gone through at least a few of these spirals or waves and and also shifts galactic shifts from one cycle into the next um, and we're going to talk about how they kind of shifted with Gaia how the Lemurians shifted from one galactic age into the next in a much more seamless way until finally they got to this point right here where the duality just kind of overtook them and we saw or they saw the fall of Atlantis and Lemuria into the lower dimensions. Whereas before, they were able to hold the higher frequency, the higher energy, higher dimensions, even in sort of the downswing of energy within the wave. So I was trying to find videos on YouTube that may have sort of like the similar feel in terms of the information that I was getting if anyone else sort of got this information about timelines and the galactic cycles and the waves and stuff like that to see if I could present other videos for you to kind of reference. And I actually found this video, it's called Our Galaxy is a Vortex, the Helical Model. Um, I think this video talks more about the planetary movements, so it might, I don't know if it's connected at all to this information that I'm presenting in this video, but the motion graphics in this video, it kind of shows how that, that spiral kind of goes into looking like the wave that I was talking about earlier. Okay, so now we're going to get into talking about this spiral timeline. And how it was actually shown to me was like a spiral hourglass timeline. And we're going to tie it back into the galactic cycles. So first of all, um, let me zoom in just a second. So the first thing that was shown to me was this sort of tube, but it wasn't a tube. It more so was shown to me in a sense of something that contained the energy of the planet. So this uh, contained this sort of yellow highlighted area that you can see in the back. And this yellow highlighted area is the collective unconscious open creative energy or Abraham brought forward universal light energy. Now, again, if you haven't watched my last video about integrating the one higher mind, watch that after this video or whenever soon because we talk about this collective unconscious mind. So I was shown this sort of container that held this open creative energy and within this container was this spiral hourglass timeline and it was shown to me in connection to the galactic cycles. So the spiral hourglass timeline is made up of these sort of linear um, timelines that go into an open expansion of the spiral timeline and then 
a contraction of the spiral timeline back into the linear timeline. So it's an expansion, contraction, linear into infinity. So to kind of make this spiral hourglass timeline illustration make more sense, let's connect it to the galactic cycles. Here in the galactic cycle, you can see um, this red line is one 26,000 year cycle. From the beginning of the 26,000 year cycle, that is when we have this sort of shifting energy. And these shifting points, what was shown to me was the beginning and end of a galactic cycle, the 26,000 years, that is sort of the linear timelines. That is when we go into the linear timelines. And when the galactic cycle opens up into the crest of the wave or the, the top part of the midpoint of the wave, that is when the spiral timeline starts to expand. That is the expansion of the spiral timeline. And then when we shift into the bottom part of the wave below the midpoint, that is when the spiral timeline starts to contract. And then again, another shifting point from one galactic age into the next is when we have this linear timeline portal as it was presented to me. During the time of Lemuria and Atlantis, they were here in the midpoint of the galactic cycle. This energy, as I was saying, has that same shifting energy because it is shifting from this upswing sort of um, crest of the wave into the downswing tro of the wave. So that's indicated from sort of that shifting point here in the spiral timeline coming from this most expansive energy shifting into more of the contracting energy. So something that I forgot to go over. In this container of energy, this tunnel, this tube, I put these arrows which actually indicated like the universal light energy, universal energy sort of being absorbed into this tunnel. It is like filtering the energy into the tunnel. So it's the same energy as this universal energy. In 3D, when we are in 3D, sort of like going through this linear timeline, we see this open creative energy as the collective unconscious because it's not readily available to us. But in the higher perspectives, such as 5D and above, this open energy is exactly that. It is open creative energy or the universal light energy. So yes, in the non-physical, there is no time. But when you're incarnated in the physical, when you're having an experience on a planet, your energy has to be contained in some way for that planet. And it's still, you're still part of a timeline. As um, you kind of integrate into the spiral timeline and expand further into the spiral timeline, you're integrating more of that open creative energy, that universal light energy. You're also integrating um, more of that no time aspect because you're connected more to the universal light energy. As your energy begins to contract with the contracting timelines, you integrate less of that open creative energy. And eventually when you merge back into that linear timeline portal, you're basically integrating none of that open creative energy or not very much. As your connection to that open creative energy, that universal light energy contracts as it becomes less and less, what happens is time becomes more tangible for you. Your perspective of time becomes more of that limited perspective versus when you're incorporating more of that open creative energy, you have that larger perspective of no time, but you're still within the quote unquote container of energy for that planet because you're in a physical, you're having a physical experience, even if you're existing on the higher dimensions. You may not perceive time the way that it's perceived in the lower dimensions or the lower linear timeline, but you're still within the energy contained for your planetary experience. 
Okay, so going back to the timeline, we are here at the end of a 26,000 year galactic shift. And so what was shown to me is that we're kind of like right around here where the linear timeline portal is sort of birthing into the new galactic age. The linear timeline portal was actually described to me as the birth canal between one galactic age into the next. So what was shown to me is like it's like the wringing out of a towel. So the energy of one galactic age has to be like wrung out, if you will, in so that it can then birth into a new galactic age with new energy. Also, as you can see, the this linear time, it has its unique energy and this linear time goes on for infinity. The energy of linear time, it doesn't just stop, it continues. So at first I thought that the linear time would actually um, sort of merge or open up into the spiral timeline, but What's becoming a little bit more clear for me is that I think the linear timeline might be separate from the spiral timeline. So this linear timeline portal holds that linear timeline, but it also holds the spiral timeline, which is more so a very tightly wound spiral timeline um, around the linear timeline. And... The idea is that after the downfall of Lemuria and Atlantis, it plunged Gaia into the lower dimensions, the lower frequencies, the lower energies, so that when that contraction of energy met up with that linear timeline portal, the evolution of humanity just sort of aligned more with the energy of that linear timeline portal, so it kind of connected or rode the wave of the linear timeline instead of being able to hold the higher energies of love and oneness, um, which Lemurians were able to do in the past. When it came to that linear timeline portals, they were able to ride the spiral wave around the linear timeline. They went through a few of these galactic shifts from one galactic cycle into the next. They went through a few of these linear timeline portals, but what came through is that they were able to hold that energy of love and oneness frequency in order to help Gaia move from one galactic cycle into the next galactic cycle. So even if we've been in this linear timeline, the spiral timeline has still been available to those of us who have been able to raise our consciousness, raise our frequency to match that more spiral timeline that still exists outside of linear time. I guess also because the spiral timeline is much more closer to linear time, you could go between the spiral timeline and linear timeline, depending upon where your individual energy and frequency was at. And I think now in the time that we're in, more and more people are raising their frequencies and consciousness and opening up to riding the wave of the spiral timeline. I'm actually going to put up another screenshot reference from that video on YouTube that I found called Our Galaxy is a Vortex that shows exactly sort of what was coming to me in terms of having that linear timeline with that tightly wound spiral timeline kind of moving together. And then as we begin to move away from that linear timeline portal, um, the spirals begin to open up and become more expansive and then starts to move away from that linear time energy so that it's incorporating more of that universal energy and less of the lower density linear energy. Okay, so I'm going to show you another view of this linear spiral hourglass timeline. Um, I created sort of like this mock-up. It's not the best. So this was that mock-up of the galactic cycle wave or that loose spiral. And this is the mock-up that I made, a very basic, basic mock-up of the spiral hourglass timeline with the linear timeline portal in the middle. As you can see, that black line in the middle of this, the green spiral. So you can see how the green spiral kind of wraps around that linear timeline 
um, in those linear timeline portals and then it opens up into more of an expansive spiral and then contracts the spiral back into the linear timeline portal. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of a better idea of what I'm talking about and the vision that I had in my mind's eye. And you know, I'm just following my breadcrumbs. I'm following the messages and the information that's coming to me and sharing it with you guys. I can't prove any of this scientifically or mathematically, but I'm just following my inner guidance and what I'm receiving. Okay, so it showed that we are here at the end of the galactic cycle. And so we are kind of in this space where the spiral timeline is becoming a little bit more available to us because we're raising our frequency. We are opening up, we are being birthed into the new galactic age and we're able to ride that energy of the spiral timeline. And that's also the shifting from 3D into 5D. 3D is very much going to continue riding the wave of the linear timeline as that goes on into infinity. But now we have the opportunity to kind of ride that higher ascension wave, ride the higher frequency wave, and catch that spiral timeline, and then slowly start to kind of integrate into the expansion of the spiral timeline. As we come up around the crest of the wave once again in the new galactic cycle. And this is also what's being shown to me is like the shift into the higher, even higher frequencies, even higher dimensions. So we're here in the beginning of the opening into a new galactic age. We're only moving into 5D from 3D. So it's possible as a civilization, as we continue on this spiral uh, timeline, that we'll then open up into even more ascension energy, higher dimensions. The Lemurians existed, what came to me was the 13th dimension. So it's possible that at their height, they were able to ascend to the 13th dimension and even hold the higher frequencies, the higher dimensions as they went through the expansion, contraction, and linear sort of timeline portals. That is until the duality became too strong for them to really be able to hold that frequency of love and oneness and the duality ended up being their downfall. I'm going to stop here for now and give you some time to sit on the information and absorb and integrate it. I am making a part two of this convoluted time series um, in which we're going to talk more about individual spiral timelines. So this video was more of that more expansive, um, higher perspective, collective and galactic energy and timelines. And in part two, we're going to dive into the individual timelines as well as manifestation, how manifestation works in the spiral timeline um, and other things like that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, Abe and Jess leave you in oneness and love.